needs to be done. We still have about half a million chronically homeless Americans. Oklahoma has worked hard towards eliminating veteran homelessness and getting to a functional zero in Norman and in Cleveland County, but millions across the country still depend on some form of government assistance for housing or food or many things. We're prioritizing work and job training, which I think is maybe something a little bit different in this administration, but we're trying to help people to become more independent. When I first interviewed for this job, I met with Secretary Carson, and this is way before he was announced as secretary. And we had a conversation about what his goals were as he got sworn in. And he said, we need to stop looking at our success as the number of people that we get into public housing. And we need to start looking at our success as the number of people we graduate out of public housing. Because it doesn't matter how much we help, there will never be enough public dollars to meet all of the demand that we have out there. Does everybody agree on that? There will never be enough public dollars. And what we have been always doing hasn't always worked. So this administration is trying to cut through the way that we've always done things and figuring out ways of making it easier, more effective, more efficient. And part of what I'm asking you here today is we're a partner in this. We are 100% a partner. HUD doesn't really do anything just on our own. We're a partner. And we work with each one of you in this room. And Sharon has heard me say this probably about 15 times and she's sick of it, but we need help. And has anybody seen the movie on um, um, Amadeus? I'm aging myself, but has anybody seen that movie? It came out a long time ago. There's, it's about um, Amadeus Mozart. It's a comedy. He is um, doing a, a concerto during a concert. And what deems a concert a success or not is how the king likes it. Well, in the middle of this concerto, the king leans back and he yawns. And that's the last time, basically, that that concert is going to be played in public. Now, by the end of the concert, Amadeus hears this. The king goes to the back of the, uh, the hall to, to talk to him. And Amadeus said, what did you think of the concert? And the king said, oh, it was great, it was great. And there were just too many notes. <laughs> At which point, Mozart looks at him and without skipping a beat says, which ones would you take out? <laughs> now I want you to think about that. Because we hear all the time there's too many regulations, there's too much paperwork, there's, there are too many um, 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 just, just red tape that we have to go through. And you can hear that and I'm willing to listen to that, but can you verbalize exactly what red tape we need to take out? What are the regulations that make your jobs miserable? What has worked and what hasn't worked? I'm relying on all of you to help me there. Let's identify that and let's get this to work on, on correcting those things. I've been, I've been in this role now as the first RA that was um, um, named in this administration for HUD. I've been here for 16 months. Every time I give a speech to a group like y'all, I offer that up. To date, I've had three people take me up on that offer to give me specifics about what we can do. So if, if anything else, if you want to go and check your email, if you want to go and, and, and take a nap before the next session, if anything else, I'm going to extend that challenge to you, is to give us specific information about how we can better improve what we do in our partnership with you. Now I'm going to try to get back on, back on script. In various cities, and right here in Oklahoma, in the Choc we have the Choctaw Nation, we're planning and vision centers. So when we talk about self-sufficiency, these are centers that we are setting up around the country, but specifically in Oklahoma and Choctaw, that are going to be communities and private enterprises that directly address the education and economic needs of families. And what we're trying to do really is to empower at the local level businesses, local governments, local agencies, to figure out the needs assessments of their community. And then we, as a federal partner, will work with all of our other federal partners to bring them in. We're promoting the idea of housing first, 
when it comes to homelessness because underlying problems like addiction, mental illness, and unemployment are far harder to solve on the street than from a home. And once we give someone an address and a personal stake in their future, permanent change is possible. We've rolled out our forward initiative at HUD, which is a three-part reform plan. This is what I was talking about earlier. The first goal is to reimagine how HUD works, and that means internal improvements, better working conditions, and more efficient internal processes. The second is to restore the American dream, and this is very closely to what we're talking about today. And we're looking at ways to tailor our programs to permanently improve lives and expand economic opportunity so that people can become self-sufficient. The third is to rethink American communities and how we make them thrive. And this means recognizing that active charities, religious institutions, focused foundations, and engaged private sector companies are often better at achieving their mission than government intervention. 